All right, everyone. A couple days ago, uh, Tom Perez, who is the technical leader of the Democratic Party, he runs the DNC, although he hasn't been highly visible, and I think this is the reason why he says stupid shit. Uh, he came out and he was ridiculing Midwestern voters and, and insinuating that the reason the Democrats don't do well in the Midwestern region, I guess the edge of the Rust Belt, and like Iowa and places like that, is because people are too religious. And, and so he's like, well, you should give up your God, basically. Now, Obama basically made an illusion like that, and people didn't like it at the time, you'll remember. I mean, trust me, Obama won in 2008 uh, because his opponent sucked and Bush had been the president. That's why he won. It wasn't because he was a particularly great candidate. Him, yeah, charismatic and younger, that definitely helped. Uh, if he had been facing off against someone like Trump, he probably would have lost, in all honesty. You know, someone who didn't want to basically be the next Bush, boring and rambling about bombing Iran. Uh, I, I want Iowa voters in specific, because you're in the Midwest. Swing state, important state, one that leans slightly red these days. I want you to remember this when 2020 comes around, maybe, what the head of the fucking Democratic Party thinks about voters in your region. See, the reason why the Democrats lose in Missouri, which is technically a competitive state, although not really, and Iowa, the reason they can't do well in Wyoming or any of these other states, it's all due to religion. They're too religious for the Democrats. I'm thinking to myself, dude, most of the people in the country fundamentally are at least spiritual. They're not hardline atheists. The Democrats don't know how to market for the modern era. <laughs> they still think, they think it's like the 90s. When anyone who wasn't an evangelical fell under the general umbrella of non-evangelicals, not specifically religious. There are other people in this country with different religions that are highly religious. There are religious Catholics that tend to lean democratic. They might look askance to this, and they're building up a sort of populist mentality and pulling closer to the Protestants anyway because of the incursion of other religions into the United States for the first time on any major scale. And so they're getting concerned about that. You've got Jewish voters now being alienated by the Democrats over the, the issue of Israel having a wall around it. So it's not looking good for them. The problem is the Democrats always do, they always do this. They always overstretch. The Republicans and Democrats both have dumb things that they do when, when they're about to seize some sort of position of power. The Republicans have a tendency to back down at the wrong time and fuck themselves. The Democrats have the alternate personality. Instead of backing away from stuff they should be forceful on, they're forceful on things they should probably reconsider bothering to talk about in the first place. Religion and guns, number one and number two on that list. It's almost always about one of those two, or about some other social wedge issue where, you know, the nation's just not with it yet. And they try to be progressive, and then they're just being racists or sexists or whatever. The Democrats are good at that, and then, and then they'll turn around and they'll aim that criticism at others. It, it's just like the Data Society report. It's like it was compiled by a bunch of people who probably have all sorts of racist beliefs. These horrible nationalists, the, the dark web of YouTube, the dark web, uh, what is it, the dark web of intellectuals or whatever. It's a bunch of bullshit. No. It was funny to see him ridiculing voters, though. It's like, yes, I wonder why the Democrats aren't doing well in this state. Hey, you dumbasses, why don't you vote for us? Uh, you, know, you, know, why, you know, you're stupid and, and uh, like Macron calling him thugs or Hillary Clinton calling people deplorable or whatever. Calling others names and insulting them is not a good way to get them to vote for you. Hey, you hayseeds. Hey, you Bible-thumping sheep humpers. Why don't you vote for us? It's not going to work, Tom. <laughs> Perez is the leader of your party. And Pelosi does the same thing. It's like she has the same exact issue. Schumer less. In all honesty, Schumer is more reserved. But Pelosi has this problem. She'll come out and she'll like harangue and lambaste and browbeat people. And she says things and I don't think she even always understands that they're insulting to other people. And so she turns off voters. This is why you don't have to worry about the Democrats prevailing on their gun control promise. That's a throwaway wedge issue that they're using to energize their base. And the next time there's a shooting, they'll harangue about it for months and it'll ultimately die in the Senate very quietly with a whimper. That's what will end up happening, because she'll come out and she'll overstretch. She'll do this because 20% of the party demands that she do so, and she'll say, well, you know, it's a case of basically the squeaky wheel gets the oil. It's a minority of the party, but they get listened to because they're the ones that are rabid and fanatic, and so they have the time to protest and harangue and send off a million emails. Some centrist neoliberal doesn't want to do that. They're like, oh, protest? Yeah, I'll make a Twitter post. That's the sum and substance of their activism. 
So that 20% is more active than the other 80% of the party when it comes to political issues. They're not as likely to vote. They tend to be younger. They're fanatics. They're not pragmatic at all. They can't govern, as we see with Cortez and some of these others. Uh, but they are, they are loud and proud, and they're in charge of the Democrats' message now. They've got Nancy Pelosi right where they want her, and they're going to strangulate their own party. And it's going to be funny to see DNC head Tom Perez. Now he's, he's coming out of his hole that he was in for two years. Um, in the wake of scandals involving DNC emails and crazy shit that was being said about voters, evangelical voters were mentioned in some of the DNC emails in not a very happy light, uh, in, in wake of stabbing Sanders in the back and all the other crazy things that were going on. Uh, Tom Perez was basically a no-show. He almost never weighed in on anything. He knew better. He wanted other Democrats to take that flack. Now that they've retaken the House... Uh, by, by, you know, a sizable lead. Uh, it's not a blue wave necessarily, but they've got control of the House. They've got the votes to do what they want there, at least. Now, he feels emboldened. Now, big mistake to come out of hiding. He's going to have to go back in like Mitch McConnell, Turtle Man himself, for two years uh, because he'll be shamefaced. Yeah, you, you'll lose Iowa in the 2020 election. So Iowa, we can call that for Trump, basically. To say he's not going to face any competition in Missouri or some of these things. Um, this might help Indiana, certainly, is a, only a lean red state. That'll stay Republican. It might even affect parts of the Rust Belt. Look, there's not a huge difference uh, geographically uh, when you think about it between Wisconsin and Iowa now, is there? <laughs> Part of most, most of Wisconsin is not the urban lake side of it. It's a bunch it's farms, dairies, and stuff like that. And old businesses that got fucked over by Democratic Party politics for 20 years economically in the wake of NAFTA. Uh, so those people naturally, I think, are leaning more and more red over time. And the economy is doing fine. People are talking about the economy is going to collapse now. They're talking about Mueller will get Trump. After all, this time it's true because Michael Cohen or something, and I'm sitting there laughing to myself, I'm making the same predictions I've been making for years that keep panning out because these people are off their fucking rocker. And your party, the, the, the Democrats, you've got to try changing things up. Look, you've already tried this before. It hasn't worked for years. The whole let's lambaste people, lots of moral wedge issues, uh, anti-charismatic old corporate sellouts will lead our party. That doesn't work anymore. The Tom Perez's and Nancy Pelosi's are no longer capable of holding your party together at all. You know, you, it's, it's just not going to work. It's going to be funny in 2020. That's about all. Peace out.